all right welcome back everyone for another video so um i know it is not thursday that i'm recording this video and i'm not posting it so let me give you guys a little uh, update on that real quick before i get into today's bible study so i am going to keep anything non-christian related videos on tuesday that's my gonna be my regular day um and i am going to be doing friday slash saturday as the um days for bible studies i was doing thursdays but that just i didn't really work out very well as i was planning because i still work thir uh, thursday night so i don't work friday and i don't work saturday so i'm going to make those two my days of being recording and uploading stop moving kitty because you're, you're shaking the tripod um but yeah so i recorded this video friday and i'm going to be updating or uh, editing it right after i get it uh recorded and then i'll upload it tomorrow on saturday so i'm gonna that's what i mean when i say friday slash saturday so in case i have any edits i need to do like i did with the camera um uh camera video i can do all of those edits and get it uploaded first thing on friday on saturday that is why I'm saying Friday slash Saturday. More than likely, if, as long as I'm not doing too much editing to my video, I should have no problem getting it uploaded on Friday. But just on the in case, I do want to say Saturday as well, because there are some times that I might need to do a lot of edits to my video in order to get it ready for being uploaded. So let's go ahead and get into today's Bible study. Um, I am going to be doing two different ones okay and i'm not my usual ones okay i know i would usually do genesis and john but today i'm actually going to do matthew and john now the reason why i'm doing matthew is because i already have matthew 3 notes done and i kind of want to take another hit at uh matthew i think it's matthew 4 uh no, I said I said correct. I have Matthew four done. I have Matthew five that I want to take another hit at. Uh, I really want to try it because I don't like quitting something, and I don't like the fact that a chapter got the best of me. So I really want to try and go over chapter five again but not from the perspective of the new king james version i want to try and hit it with the perspective of the english standard version which that's this one remember i've been i've been reading out of this one so i really want to try and hit it uh with this version instead and see if maybe that might make a difference because i mean that's that's one of the reasons why my friends bought me this bible in the first place is because uh, I was having such a hard time with chapter 5 and it was just really frustrating me and she recommended this version. So I'm going to go do uh, chapter 3 today, chapter 4 tomorrow along with John and then I'm going to start trying to hit chapter 5 again and see if it makes even just a tiny bit more sense. Uh, because then I can get through get through Matthew. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the reading of chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3 is really short. I think there's only like 17 verses. Um, and then I have this little... I keep forgetting what these things are called. Uh, these little paragraph things written by certain people on certain chapters. Reflection, maybe, I think they were called. I can go into reading that. So let's go ahead and read this. So this is John, uh, John the Baptist prepares the way. So in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who has spoke, or who, who was spoken by, of, of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore a garment or a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea, all the region 
about the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when the, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, "You brood of vipers, who warned you to keep? Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit uh, in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham, or for Abraham." Uh, even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His renewing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshold, his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chain will burn with unquenchable fire. Now this is the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would, uh, John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending, descending like a dove, and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And that is that. Now let's go ahead and read um, the... Uh, Reflection I have on it real quick before I get into my actual notes. So this is called preparing for the Lord's coming and it is just all over on Matthew 3. Alright, so it's, this was written by Claire Smith. So it says, 700 years before John the Baptist began preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Isaiah had prophesied about a voice crying in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord, Isaiah, 4, Isaiah 43, which I had in my notes too. Uh, 400 years before John, the, uh, the, uh, for, the, 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 400 years before John, the prophet Malachi likewise prophesied of one who would prepare the way of the Lord. Malachi 3, 1, and then 4, 5 through 6. There had been no true prophet since. But the silence was now broken. God had promised to visit his people and had promised a messenger to prepare his way. John was that promised messenger, the prophet about whom these earlier prophets had prophesied. He was the herald announcing the arrival of the king and preparing the people to meet this king. Jesus, God's promised Messiah, was coming and people needed to turn from the sin and accept his rule. John was preparing the way of the king, or preparing the way for the king, just as God had foretold all those years earlier through the prophets. Although these prophets were centuries old, John's message was urgent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king was coming, but what? But so too was the wrath of God. People needed to be warned so that they would repent from their sins while there was still time. Repentance is not about outward appearance, simply undergoing a religious ritual or saying one thing of but believing and living another. It means confessing away, confessing sins and turning away from sin. It means having changed hearts and lives. It means death to the old way of life and submission to the rule of the king. Jesus' coming rule demanded an urgent and wholehearted response. So we see two timelines at work in John's ministry. First, there is the long, slow fulfillment of prophecy, seven, 700 years of waiting for the voice in the wilderness, and then the coming of the king. But second is the urgent need to repent and be ready for the king, to avoid the coming wrath. We must not be fooled by these timelines, as if the apparent slowness of this, the first cancels out the urgency of the second. Uh, 
God is true to his word, Isaiah and Malachi may not have known through whom or when or how God would fulfill his promises, but they knew that he would. That would be in a uh, First Peter one ten through twelve, and then Second Peter three eight through through ten. Uh, God has promised that this same Lord Jesus, whose way John prepared, is coming again to judge the living and the dead, and only those who trust in Him will be prepared at this coming, or at His coming, and will avoid the, com the coming wrath. Second Thessalonians one eight through nine. He is coming again. The time is to prepare now. I like that. That is not that. That is so much better than some of the some of the notes I have, or some of the things I took notes on. I like. I really like that. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the notes I have taken, shall we? Okay. So this is kind of relatively simple. I'm gonna scoot to the forward. Can you stop moving, kitty cat? You are you are ruining my video. Stop! You're shaking my camera. You're shaking my tripod. Stop! Hey, hey, hey! Stop! Yes, you, you the black face, you the black paws, and the gray pads. Yeah, thank you. Stop! You're, you're tilting my camera. So I actually had to move my I had to move my tripod away from the cat because my tripod's right there, the cat's right there. Like literally, I'll show you real quick. Cat. He was literally leaning. He was literally laying right against the base of the tripod, which is why it was shaky. Uh, which is why I was making those black jokes. Not like actually racist black jokes, but he's he's a black cat. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get into this. So, um, so just like um, the uh, reflection was talking about repentance and whatnot, and how you're actually how we're actually supposed to be turning away from. Uh, Actually, turning away from sin and having our changed hearts and life. Um, uh, Blue Letter Bible basically says the exact same thing, and how some people think repentance as more of just feelings and feeling sorry for your sin, but it's not really um, re repentance is not really an actual feeling word. It is a action word, and it means to change. So to change the mind, the action. Um, to actually change what you're actually doing and not just feeling sorry for what you did uh, but it is a change of direction and not a sorrow in the heart so first thing I kind of want to point out is in 3 2 where it says repent that is the first word that uh, John uses and it is also Jesus' first word in 4.17. See so here, when you go into the actual next chapter, which I will be doing John 4, I mean, not Matthew 4 next week. But in, uh, in this one, it says, well, in, number, in verse 17, it says here, uh, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, and his first word is repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, and the reason why I pointed that out is because it kind of points out the fact that repentance, repenting in general, is a really important word and it's not just being neglected. Uh, the emphasis of kingdom of heaven is near uh, and we need to get ready now and this is why John's message is so urgent and why it is so important. Uh, that we actually start getting ready for the coming Messiah. Or in this case, our case, actually the return of the coming Messiah. Okay, so he he's already come before us. He's already, this has already happened, and with the exception of uh, Revelation, of course. So we don't need to get ready for him to come because like I said, he's already come. We need to get ready for his return. Because uh, as 
most people know, according to the Christian belief, uh, and Jesus came, he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he went back to heaven, and then he's going to be coming back again. So, he's already done these other four things, but he has not come back again yet. So that is what we need to be preparing for. So yes, this kind, this, um, the kingdom of it is at hand is technically meant for the fact that he's trying to say, hey, prepare the way because the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming, but it's not just dedicated to you at this point in time. It is now, it's also related to today as well because the fact is that while Jesus might have come, He's supposed to be coming again, and at that point, that is when he's supposed to be taking all the Christians who are believing in him and everything. So, we still need to get ready for his return. Uh, so, as, as it said in the reflection here, uh, prepare the way is from Isaiah 43. But it is also from Malachi 3, 1, and 4, 5 through 6. They are all prophets who had, reported, who had prophesied that there was going to be someone coming uh, and we need to make paths, the path straight for the Lord. Um, but one thing it does, one thing I did, this was kind of not mentioning the fact is that... Um, John's purpose was to prepare the hearts of people for Jesus and to bring awareness of sin so that they could receive the salvation from sin offered by Messiah. Which I guess that's technically what she was talking about too. Um, talking about that as well. Um, so then it goes into the fact that what, what John's kind of wearing, the whole camel's hair, leather belt around his waist, he was eating locusts and wild honey. Uh, now, here's the verse for that. So in Elijah, um, okay, that's what. So the guy's name was Elijah. So in 2 Kings 1.8, let me go to that real quick. Um, it was supposed to be the fact that he was mimicking this guy named Elijah. And he, or not, not not really mimicking, but he was pattering after him. Uh, Second Kings. I'm in, I'm in five. Two. One. Here we go. Okay, so it says... Uh, is it okay? So I'm going to go from verse 7. So he said, He said to them, What kind of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? Verse 8. They answered him, He wore a garment of hair and a leather, uh, garment of hair with a leather belt about his waist. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. So he's not really trying to mimic him, like I was just saying. He's trying to pattern his life after him. is now trying to attack the TV because there's a squirrel on the TV. I was getting tired and tired of the uh, uh, the rain and the thunders I put on birds and whatnot because we don't really get that here. And now my cat is trying to attack the TV because there's a squirrel on the screen. Cat TV. Anyways, so yes. So he was calling Israel to repent just like uh, John is here. And uh, he wore the he wore what he wore. He wore the the locust, the, the the camel's hair, the leather belt. I don't know if he actually ate the locust and the honey, but uh, he did mimic how he was dressed. Um, so audience, so goes into. Uh, John's audience and all these people that came to come to uh, get baptized by him. And then he mentions the fact that there's these Pharisees and his Sadducees who are coming to be baptized. Uh, but they're not actually coming to be baptized. They are just faking it. Which is why John uh, calls them, you brood of vipers. So his tone changes automatically going from... Uh, 
prepare the way for the king, prepare the way for the Messiah, then to you brood of vipers. I'm guessing he's probably sounding really hostile, really mean, really angry. Uh, so they came to him with the pretend idea of being baptized, but John already saw through it, okay? It's not kind of, it's kind of obvious. Um, so they have false hearts and they're not really wanting to repent or anything. They are just there for show, I guess. Um, so that's why he was demanding the fruits worthy of repentance, kind of getting um, a way to prove that they actually wanted to get, uh, they actually wanted to repent. Um, now, the flee from the from wrath to come is referring to the wrath of God and how they're wanting to get away from his anger. Um, and okay, yes. So, so since John already knew of their true intention, he tells them not to use Abraham as their ticket and to truly repent. Because only God is able to raise anyone to Abraham and into his merits. Uh, which is why he says these stones to raise up children for a for Abraham. Okay. Um, now the trees are metaphors for us people, humans. Uh, it's kind of obvious. So those who believe in Christ will bear good fruit, and those who do not believe in it will believe will bear bad fruit, and will be cut down. So every so every now is the axe is laying to the tree, uh, to the root of trees, which is us. Um, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, which meaning the lake of fire with with Satan, Lucifer, and all his demons. <laughs> Uh, but John recognizes, he goes on into saying he recognizes his place by saying he baptizes with water for the repentance, but the one who comes after him, Jesus, uh, is mightier than he, and he will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. But then he puts himself down to be so low, he puts himself basically lower than the slave of a servant by saying that uh, he... Uh, he is not worthy to uh, ca carry even his sandals. So he says, uh, After me is mighty than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. So he's literally put himself as low as dirt uh, before God and Jesus. And, well, it makes me kind of wonder if we should be doing the exact same thing. If we should be really kind of copying him and kind of thinking the exact same way. I mean, we already we know we're lower than Jesus, okay? We already know that. Rude. There's the cat that was trying to attack the TV. Um, but I am wondering if whether or not we should be actually having this kind of same mindset of the fact that we're lower than a servant, or lower than a servant's slave. Um, so, going on again, uh, he goes on to say that we need to start getting ready for uh, the Messiah because he's coming with judgment. Which is the winnowing fork in his hand, and he would clear his threshold floor and gather his wheat into the barn to burn the uncontrollable fire. Um, baptizing with the Holy Spirit is the is a promise from Ezekiel 37:14, and but baptize with fire means to bring fires of judgment, which will purify the pure and destroy the wicked. Now, chaff, C H A F F, is a is the worthless reside of wheat stock after the kernel of grain has been removed. Uh, so then Jesus comes to Galilee from, or he comes to the Jordan from Galilee to be baptized by John. And well, that's kind of that's kind of ironic. Um, it has nothing. He has Jesus has nothing to repent of. Um, and on top of it too, the fact that he is a king t 
technically he should be the one doing the baptizing. He should be baptizing John. So, uh, well, there's an irony to it, and John kind of picks up on it with the whole question of, uh, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? It's kind of an ironic thing, but Jesus basically is saying, um, he understood the irony and he said it was necessary to still get baptized by John. Uh, it was just one additional step uh, in his mission and to identify with men who are fallen and sinful. So, this mission obviously would lead to the cross and would be fulfilled by the cross or at the cross. So, Jesus goes and he allows himself to be baptized by John and his uh, this identified him with the sinful man. Then something completely awesome happens. Okay, um, God opens the heavens and he publicly demonstrates that his baptism was not like everyone else's. Uh, the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in a very dramatic way and that can be similar to the acts to the spirit of God descending upon the disciples in Acts 2 1 through 4. Uh, but see here, as explained in Genesis one time, he descended upon him like a dove, which was what happened in uh, with the Noah and the ark, and the fact that he let out a dove to go find out if there was the water receded. Um, Um, so, the dove is now being represented as the spirit of God, because not only was he in uh, Genesis, he's now here again in Matthew, um, I believe he was also in, uh, the Holy Spirit was, the dove I think was also in John, but I'm not 100% sure again now, um, and obviously of course now he was also in uh, Acts. So, then God's voice spoke. And so everyone knew that Jesus was not just a, another man being baptized. Uh, this baptized Jesus to be identified with sinful man, but also to be identified after two sinful men. Uh, so there is a clear definition between uh, one person's baptism and Jesus' baptism. And then there's a clear definition of the fact that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son are are all one being Jesus Christ and kind of symbolizes the uh, the Holy Trinity um, especially with that when he says this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased so there's this kind of real strong well I just did a real strong bond between the three points and uh, the fact that Jesus is actually really loved by God so yeah, and there you have it. That is Matthew 3. So hopefully I did not do a bad job on that and explaining certain things. And I hopefully this little reflection page here actually really helps on that too. So if that helps, let me know in the description below. Uh, if I did good on this, this on this chapter, also let me know. Like I said, no worries. Um, I will see you guys for Matthew 3, or Matthew 4 next week. You guys have a great weekend.